Good morning, Vinlanders. Hope you can hear me all right. I tested out this microphone from Walmart, which was $10, and they're kicking the purple panda's ass. Even with the visor open. Figure we go for a ride this morning. Since I actually have work tonight, so need to tire myself out and take a nap. So I guess we started off with current things. I actually got most of the footage I need for Vinlander film this last week when I was off. The problem is it's 4K video. So we're actually getting internet this week and I should be able to upload everything onto my computer after I get it updated and be able to use it. So that being said, we're actually on our way to get a passport today, which is an external hard drive. We're going to speed up here, so I'm going to close my visor. And that way I'm not taking up my memory card storage, my phone storage, or my actual computer storage. I haven't really been able to use my computer in the last few months. Uh, reason being is because it needs to be connected to the damn internet all the time or ever so often to actually update and confirm that you have a working computer. So I figured we'd take a long way around and maybe have a good conversation about things. So obviously I changed the name of the channel to Heathen on Wheels and it was an idea I had for the longest time but I was sticking with Odinus Rider last time. So after the first failed season, I kind of learned a few things, like not to talk about my religion all the time, talk about more and more motorcycle-oriented things, biker life, and we'll throw some ostrich stuff in there occasionally. Hope you guys enjoyed the new intro. I figured I'd shorten it up, take out the corny music, and uh, yeah. But anyways, I thought my helmet was the biggest issue. Apparently it's not. This thing actually expires this December, so this helmet's almost five years old. That being said today too, we're stopping and I'm putting money in the bank so I can buy a new helmet. And well, I'm gonna buy myself one of those Atlas 2s. Or Atlas 2.0s. Every helmet I've looked at, I keep getting drawn back to it, so I might as well drop the cash on it. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the Ranger model. Their next disbursement is July 31st, hopefully. I don't think I'll have it before my big trip, but if I got the audio issue solved with this helmet right now, it'll work. That being said, I have to ask if I can actually film because those guys, uh, most people don't like to be on camera, and that's understandable. I mean, I can block out bases and license plates, but that's a lot of work for a long video. Unless you got the right software, I think. So you may notice you're mounted on the side of my helmet. And the reason is because it's just easier for the cable to go there. I took off the front mount because I thought the helmet was the issue. So right now I have absolutely no front mounting on the helmet. And I'm not putting another one on there until I get a new helmet. So you guys might be stuck with this view for a while. Which is not too bad. You can see a lot more actually. You just see a little bit of the helmet. The only big issue is if I get like into an accident or something, I'm not really able to activate the camera right away. So, and hopefully the mic is working just fine. It's a baller from, uh, or a bower, sorry, from Walmart, $10, you know, competing with that purple panda, which was total crap. Boy, nice thing about the purple panda, it's got a nice foot cord and a windscreen. And I've been able to actually, I'll probably just use that for like talking head vlogs and things like that. If I go somewhere I'll set up and just put the mic on. Because it works fine off the bike, but as soon as you get on the bike with it, forget it. I got a shotgun mic, a Rhodes. That one's a nice one too. But that can only do so far. That's kind of like if you're sitting on a table. Better slow my ass down a little. 
it's early morning, but I'm pretty sure the sheriff is out somewhere. So that's why you guys only got a little video last week because all my audio was scrambled and I couldn't edit any of the 4K stuff on my phone. So, you know, it's one of those things. But we got a lot of roads around here to ride. I love living up here. Life has been pretty grand. I haven't had to worry about very much of anything, honestly. I just wish all these people stopped coming up from like bigger cities. They kind of ruin the atmosphere. Keep your asses down there. So this road leads out to the highway, which we're gonna cross the highway and we're gonna go up through another section of the road. And I might run out of things to talk about before we're even done with it anyway. That's been my toughest thing in motovlogging, I guess, is finding stuff to talk about. I mean, I could talk about riots right now and COVID and all that happy horse, but I really don't want to. I mean, I'm trying to run a good, clean channel a library. I'm not getting very many hits, so I actually probably will do a wave of that and just use YouTube for now until I find another kind of video service that has a lot of traffic on it. Uh, I've been using a lot of tags or trying to use quite a few tags in my uh, videos. I've joined a few other groups, so we could probably actually, uh, you know, get tips on motor blocking and how to get my stuff out there and promote it. So I'm going to have to keep it generally clean. Uh, there will probably be a warning discretion if, you know, it's kind of religious heavy or maybe it's like cursing and swearing like I just did a little bit ago. So I've honestly never been down this road, but... Like I said, I got enough footage for the first episode of Venlander. Quite a few places I've been. Not entirely everywhere. But I guess we'll talk about my helmet choice and why I'm going to purchase one. The Atlases are kind of all the rage right now, which I understand because they got their own shockwave system. The LS they're Bluetooth. They're a little expensive, but I've never really had a good expensive helmet. I got this Harley Davidson HGC edition for like 70 bucks when it was on sale, so I've had it for the last three years. I just wanted to get rid of it, I guess. Everything else has either been half shells, quarter shells, or HGC. I'm sorry, HGC. Whatever, I can't even remember the brand anymore because I barely ever use it. And the Atlas is a pretty light. They're a little noisy from my ear, but they're very light. Uh, like I said, they got their own Bluetooth. They also got a lot of features, a lot of visors, and some accessories. And I'm very interested to see what they come out in the next year. So. This trip I'm going on, from what I know it's still going, around maybe a thousand miles around the state which Wisconsin is actually pretty big if you could actually go around it we're gonna be riding some roads that I've never been on before so that's gonna be fun I've never been into the southwest part of the Wisconsin I've been in the northwest the northeast and on the eastern side What I find very appalling sometimes is that everyone considers Green Bay Northeast. I just consider that Central. You know, people are just like, well, Northeast Wisconsin, Green Bay. No, that's not the North. North is Crivets. Good thing I'm ordering a pen lock too. My visor just fogged up on me. This is Highway 29. Typical going to run it when I really need to get somewhere quick. We're going to see. I know where this road leads to, but I've never been on it, like I was saying. Once we hit the uh, their actual junction, I know where I'm at. There's some roads. 
roads I won't ride. Uh, up here too is you're gonna get some a lot of commentary with the first episode of M Hunter because of my audio malfunctions. I was getting eaten a lot by bugs too, so it was quick and a little sparse. Maybe if they calm down, I'll go back up and refilm it another day. We may get about two episodes for the summer of it. The traveling is very far. It's just the distance that doesn't, which doesn't bother me very much, but the actual distance is just like horrendous and it takes time to get up in there. But basically the whole thing is about where I camped out all last summer. And I was pretty much a drifter, I guess. I had uh, absolutely no responsibility whatsoever. So I decided that when I was told I needed to leave a place, I might as well just, you know, go do what I've always wanted to do, camp out on a bike all summer. I've always mentioned doing it. So I finally put it into practice. I was gonna film it, but at the time I had a GoPro 4 with some really bad audio issues. The whole thing would like jump and chirp and you know, it had a lot of bad sounds. I got a premium mic with it, plugged it in, same thing was happening. So you couldn't just set the thing up and talk. It was like total the garbage. And I have some footage from last year. I'll try to pull off my previous channel and show you. But it's not as great. This GoPro 8 on the other hand, this thing has just been a beast. I mean, I've been using it for the past two months now. And I'm not disappointed with it. The media mod was a little bit of getting used to it. It's not waterproof either, so you gotta be really careful. Uh, when I was up north, I got caught in a rainstorm, had to throw it in the saddlebag, so pulled over on the side of the road. And that rainstorm was brutal, but this thing, the bike itself handled like a champ. If I had the door cover, I could probably use the GoPro, but for an expensive investment that as it is, I didn't really want to risk it. I mean, you get special deals, and I'm pretty sure they're coming out with the next one. So that's why the price is dropping on them. The accessories aren't bad anymore. They're very cheap, actually. And there are so many other people that make them. Well, I guess another thing, too, is I got a back bar, sissy bar coming for this thing. About 19 inches total. Uh, that way my old lady can ride on the back. She'll be comfortable. And we're gonna have to put like a back uh, bar bag on too. I haven't decided what to buy yet. I've been looking at the Expo packs. Uh, I've been looking at Burley Brands, Voyager. I guess it just all depends on what I really want. Because who knows what we're gonna encounter out there and I'm pretty sure we wanna change the clothes at least. I could shove everything in my saddle bags but I'm afraid the bike would be overloaded then on the side. What I've learned about long distance riding is pack as light as possible, only take what you actually need, and don't bring anything you're not prepared to lose. I had a spare vest for me, it was Kevlar, that I saved up for months before I left Phoenix, Arizona, and I shoved about $500 up in the top pocket for gas and food. Well, I get to one gas station one day in New Mexico, I think it was we're after Nebraska and I discovered the best was gone. So that was a lesson learned. 500 bucks in the vest, a Kevlar vest that took me a few months to save up for because at the time I was working for 10 bucks an hour in New York State. It was ridiculous. I was mad. I was very angry. But like I said, you don't bring anything on a bike that you're not prepared to lose. Probably should have downshifted there. But anyway guys, I think this is going to be it for this moto vlog. And I'll share some wisdom and knowledge with you of my experiences eventually here. But I'm going to concentrate on riding today, so... I'll catch you guys later. Stay heathen.